Hey everyone, in this video we're just going to be going through a little bit of the treasure map or the treasure hunt that's going on, but specifically the emerald map. So this is the one that a lot of players are looking at because you can get a lot of, well, good cards out of it basically. But the cost is extremely high and you need to have so many rubies to make it worthwhile. Firstly, to even open the roadmap, you need an emerald key, which costs 75,000 rubies. And every day we get a very limited supply, so you have to be ready to spend an enormous amount in order to actually get something out of this event. Now, a plus side is that all rubies and emeralds from previous events, because we've had treasure hunt before, are being carried over to this roadmap as well, so this whole event. I've only been doing the free-to-play aspect because there's really no point in me trying to save up my rubies. We get, I think it's 6,000 a day based off of the roadmap as well as the free 3,000 that we get for logging in. And 6,000 just doesn't really get you anywhere close to 75,000. On top of that, you need 20,000 rubies to play through the Emerald roadmap. So you need 95,000 rubies to complete the whole Emerald Roadmap. And the, only the last stage of the Emerald Roadmap can be farmed for more emeralds. Now the Emerald Exchange is okay. It's not great because you get 1,500 guaranteed emeralds for completing the three stages, which costs 20,000 rubies total. And with the last stage costing 10,000 rubies total and being the only one you can farm, it can get quite expensive really quickly. With it costing 5,000 emeralds to even get 1,500 trader cards or a little bit more of other cards, like it, it just doesn't seem worth it to me. It seems like a very expensive event and if you would like to save your rubies and assume or at least hope that there's another treasure hunt event, you could get lucky. Like if you end up saving them, so just keep on saving your rubies if you don't need anything off of the um, the treasure wheel where there's a bunch of different six star characters. There's also some trainers on it. If you don't want to make pulls off of that, don't. You could end up saving all your rubies and hope that the map comes around another time. Now, of course, it's going to take quite some time to save your rubies. And if you have an itchy finger, if you're itching to pull, it can be quite difficult, but Having some discipline over it could be very beneficial for you because you'll assume you'll have to assume that the next time we have this event, if it occurs again, there'll be new S-Class characters and new items that are available for us to pick up. For me, as a free-to-play player, I can't really sit on a lot of things. I need to be very pointed with what I'm collecting, when I'm collecting it, where I'm collecting it from, and what I plan to use it for in the future. One thing that I've really focused on in the S-Class era is focusing on getting one S-Class tune at a time and sometimes passively getting another one. So sometimes, like this past week, there were a lot of Rosita cards up for, well, I'll, I'll call it auction. Well, it's more for competing, but I focused really hard, um, especially in some of the faction events where we were able to earn some extra cards. So I'm actually fairly close to getting her as an S-Class. I'm just kind of holding off a little bit because you can also pull some Rosita cards off of the battle pass. So I'm very close, but I'm also in no rush because I don't see her currently improving my team. So I'd rather sit and hold on to some of my boxes and options instead of using them all on a whim. And I think that's one of the most difficult parts of playing this game, determining like when you should pull, when you should save, what you should do. Um, so now you guys just saw through the emerald event, um, I'm just going to use some tokens to see if it'll drop emeralds every time. So don't use a bronze token because it seems like it won't always drop them. Um, so the last stage, you definitely want to farm it. The drops are decent, 500, 800, 1000 are what I've gotten so far. And when you think about it, over the whole of a uh, roadmap, you can get 1500 standard. You're spending half the amount of rubies that the roadmap costs, and you're getting 500 is low, 800 is still kind of okay because, like, the middle ground would be 750. The ideal amount, of course, you want to get is a thousand. Um, so, this event, like, it's heavy skewed to spenders. 
if you want to get your emeralds and because of the quantity of emeralds needed you definitely want to have an enormous amount of rubies so that you can farm this last stage. I will say it's kind of lucky and kind of nice that for 75,000 rubies at least it's not one green emerald key it's four so you have a chance to open that map four times but I would honestly just keep on saving and make sure you have tons of rubies to do it because if you're using all those rubies, 75,000 to pull your keys and then you need at least 20,000 to run through it, well, it's just super expensive. Like I started with 100,000 rubies and I was just running through that stage. I ended up getting enough that I could pull on Trader and get um, the 1,500 cards and still have a few emeralds left over, but... It's all based on kind of how much you're willing to spend, how long you're willing to save, and do you really need the characters who are here? Anyway, thank you everyone for watching and listening to my video. I hope it gave you some insight to the event, as well as helped you figure out if the event is kind of worthwhile to spend money on or not.